Welcome to Pod Nuts, episode number 27. Today we're going to learn about being a network administrator. We're joined by Keith Albright of the Mind of Root Podcast. And he is a network admin. And he's going to tell us all about what that kind of job entails, what kind of training you need. And we also get into other things like network security, firewalls, root kits, viruses, spyware, denial of service attacks, things of that nature. Let's get right into it then. Here's the interview with Keith. Enjoy the show. All right, I'm here with Keith Albright of the Mind of Root podcast. It is at mindofroot.com. If you're a computer administrator, you will understand what that title means. Keith is a computer admin. He's actually a, he's a director of IT for a small suburban company. And we're going to explore life as a computer administrator, basically, um, something I don't have a lot of experience with. So I'm anxious to ask Keith uh, what it's all about. Keith, how you doing, first of all? I'm doing good, Steve. Doing good. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks for joining us. No problem. It's a pleasure. Well, I guess what I wanted to ask you is um, basically what's your job duties kind of like as a director of IT for a company? Uh, well, I work in a very small company, so I'm, I'm kind of – I call it the lone gunman type shop where uh, jack of all trades, master of none. We have, you know responsible for doing everything. And uh, by everything, that is desktop support, server support, and installation – uh, network design and, and installation and maintenance. Uh, it basically, it comes down to uh, as one of a colleague of mine at a former job, you know, joked if it plugs into the wall, they call you about it. <laughs> so, you know, if it's got electricity in it, they think that you're responsible for it. <laughs> and uh, and that's what happens in it, you know, in a small business when when you're the the lone IT person. So. Right. And it also seems kind of fun, like probably more challenging and, and diverse than than working for a bigger company. How many? Um, users do you handle uh we have about 50 users total oh that's that's not that small yeah we're small small to mid size. yeah and what do you have to do for these users uh well, everything from uh general desktop support um application support for the, the the custom applications that were either built internally or you know even off the shelf packages that uh uh, that they use in their day-to-day lives. Um, we have a. Uh, we're just actually pushing into some mobile users. Uh, the the company was very uh, internal and you know just desktop users, and now we're starting to push into the mobile workspace with laptops, remote access, and and those sorts of things. Um, so I'll, I'll be getting in a lot into supporting users with that that type of access. But uh, how does that any, work? Does that package. work over a VPN or? Yeah, yeah, I use uh, uh, Juniper VPN, uh, Juniper Networks, uh, but any any of the major vendors, Cisco, um, you know, trying to think of who else, but uh, I mean, WatchGuard, Firewall, th- those types of um, firewall vendors have VPN capabilities built into their products, and it's essentially a, a client software on the laptop that uh, connects up to the firewall, you know, authenticates them, and then they have. Um, policy-based access to resources on the internal network as if they were sitting at their desk. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's pretty much a definition of a VPN, because that was going to be my next question. Yeah, yeah, v- VPN is uh, basically creating a, a network link from your workstation to that internal network um, securely, which is the private part, and virtually, meaning transporting it over top of the, the Internet or any other public network. Hmm. So, uh, what, what kind of like operating system do you guys use there? Uh, it's majority of it is a Windows shop. Um, okay. I have introduced a, a little bit of Linux to it uh, using some free and open source packages for anti-spam solution. Okay. So, uh, so I, I do dabble in Linux personally, and I do find that there is a good place for it in the business world, especially uh, for a low cost solution for a lot of things. Sure. And uh, it's very, you know, reliable. Huh. Uh, but my my background is everything from mainframes to uh, I was actually pretty hardcore into the Novell operating system at one point, Novell Netware, and uh, now mostly focus, like I said, on the Windows world and, and dabble in Linux. Mainframes. So did that do do uh, companies still have make main, huge mainframe computers or? Yeah, they they still do. I mean, the last large company I worked for, they uh, they had replaced one of the uh, the IBM mainframes that they had with a, a new generation model. And it, it is interesting, the guy actually showed me uh, after it was installed down in the data center that at the, the heart of this IBM mainframe, and I don't know which model it was, but was an IBM ThinkPad, that that was actually the management uh, component of this massive mainframe and, you know, would send it the, the controls and, and the management signals that it needed. You mean like a motherboard from a ThinkPad, basically? No, an actual ThinkPad, like, docked into this mainframe, and <laughs> yeah. that was how they, they managed it. Yeah. I mean... 
other than the remote management of it, but from the, the management of it at, at, you know, right at it, that's what they used. That is interesting. Could you undock it and just walk around with the thing? Yep. Yeah, because they made a joke about how, you know, if somebody takes this, uh, you know, thinking they're stealing or just plain old laptop, we're, we're really up a creek. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's undocked, it still has access to the server and everything like that? Still can control it? No, no, it's okay. it's, it's uh, I think some kind of direct link. <laughs> That's so fun. But uh, but main, mainframes uh, have kind of seen a, a rejuvenation, especially with the a- advent of virtualization. Uh, especially with IBM, they're a big proponent of virtualizing uh, like Red Hat Linux servers on their mainframes. So you, you know, mainframes were always partitionable, but uh, these days that partition space is now known as you know virtualization, and you can virtualize multiple Linux boxes running off of a mainframe to, to better utilize all the horsepower that it has. Better utilize the horsepower. So it's basically better to have like like 10 virtual machines than one big, big machine? Well, when you think about it on your desktop, and you know this is where the, the virtualization pushes really come in, on your desktop, when it's sitting idle or even a server, is probably only using 10, 15 percent of the processing power. Yeah. It may spike here and there as it, you know, it's given a task to do to 70, 80 percent, you know. But for the most part, it's running, you know, very little of the resources that it's capable of. So by introducing virtualization, you're saying I've got a processor that's capable of running at 100 percent of the time, uh, you know, at 100 percent capacity. If I introduce 10 virtual machines running, you know, each using 10% of it, I can, you know, and obviously you don't want to take it all the way up to 100, but right. you want to better utilize all those resources that are on there. And certain applications just go hand in hand with that, you know, an, an SMTP application and, uh, uh, you know, an SMTP server and a, a, a web server. Each of them not really using that much processing power might be great to virtualize on the same hardware together. I see. You know, it's all starting to come back to me now because when Mike, I had Mike Smith on the show, like, you know, like 15 episodes ago and he started talking about virtualization and it's you know that was like my first real indoctrination to it and now it's starting to come back to me yep um now i know why you guys have so much in common yeah (laughs) um do you do virtualization at your company i'm actually just in the process of defining what my virtualization strategy is going to be and I I, i was talking with some colleagues about which direction to go because you can go with the the microsoft solution with hyper v or the VMware, which has been the, the mainstay in the industry, or the, 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 the biggest uh, uh, innovator in the industry, I should say, VMware. I see. Um, so I'm still kind of deciding which, which uh, one I want to back there long term. Right. But I definitely do need to move into that realm. Uh, that sounds kind of fun. You're basically taking, you say, okay, I got 100 pieces, to 100% here I have to use up or close to it. What can I run on this machine to like really utilize the processor power? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. How did you get um, 